Well, hey there, everybody. My name is Derek. I am one half of the Handball Brothers. The other half of the Handball Brothers, Bryce, would have been here today, but due to some scheduling conflicts, we've scheduled this on his birthday. So, you know, um, he's off doing birthday things right now. So I'm covering the fort for him today. Um, today we're going to be talking about how to use YouTube um, along with your handball choir in order to help engage your audience and get more viewers and get more people excited about what it is that you guys do. Um, the cool thing about handbells is handbells is such a visual medium that YouTube is really the best way to promote your group because people can not only hear what you sound like but also see all the bells moving. And I find that if I show people really cool videos of handbells, um, they're instantly in love with the art form. And so what's one of the big things I've, we've been pushing here on the blog is trying to promote lots of videos and uh, show people what it is the cool things that handbells can do. So as we're going, if you have questions, you can put them in the comment box on the side of the screen. Um, you can also tweet them at Handbell Bros or um, put them up on Facebook, and I will try to find them and answer as many of them as I can. I already got a few before um, we started. So here we go. The first big thing about putting videos up on YouTube is actually getting a good quality video. We could do an entire webinar on just recording good quality handbell videos. Um, but to kind of put it in a nutshell as to how to get a good video of your group easily um, with technology that everybody has with them, um, the first thing is if you're just going to put a camcorder in, in the room with the choir, um, be sure you set it on the base end of the table and not the treble end of the table. Um, it really helps balance the choir out a lot better because the bass bells don't carry quite as well as the treble bells because uh, no matter where you put the camera in the room you will hear the little bells it's it's getting those bass bells and so I find that if, if I ever record our group with just a single camera I always put the camera towards the bass end of the table and not the treble end so that kind of helps balance things out. Um, the other thing is if you're recording um, I would highly recommend recording your sound separate from your audio and then mixing the two together later um, a lot of groups um, perform in churches that have at least a mid-sized audiovisual setup, um, and so that's actually pretty easy to do. Then, if you if you already have the sound tech guys in your church, um, they can probably do all the sound recording for you. Um, so talk to the tech guys at your church if you have that um, available. Um, but I find that recording the sound and the uh, the sound in the video separately really helps a lot because you can get a nice quality sound and a nice quality video and not have to worry about making sure that the two of them are in the same place. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. You'll notice like as I'm showing you um, the videos and stuff that I do for my handbell group that there are microphones set up near the table and I actually record the audio separately from the video and then combine the two afterwards. Um, but we can do an entire whole um, webinar and video recording later for bell groups. There's all kinds of cool stuff you can do. And I'm still, I'm still learning all kinds of cool things to do with that. Okay, so let's just assume that you have a handle video and you want to put it up on YouTube. What do you do with it? Um, the first thing I would recommend is make your handle group its own YouTube page. I don't know, um, there, there are only a few groups I've found so far that have their own dedicated YouTube pages and that keep them up to date. Um, if you look at Sonoran Bells down in Tucson or... Bells of, the, um, Bells of the Sound up in Washington, um, or the Raleigh Ringers, obviously, they all have their own dedicated YouTube pages. I really like the dedicated YouTube page as opposed to you just posting up videos of your group on your own personal page. Um, it gives me something, it gives, you know, those of us who want to follow your group, it gives them something to subscribe to that only shows them the Bell videos that they want to see. It also just looks a lot more professional. Um, you can do that. You can set up your own YouTube pages really easily. Um, the cool benefit of doing that is you also get your own Gmail account um, for your handbell group, which is awesome, because then when you have business cards, you can put, you know, um, like these are our business cards. These are our business cards for our group, and you'll notice that it just says um, tintabulations at gmail.com. And so that way, when we tell people to email us, we just have them email um, tintabulations at gmail.com instead of giving them our own personal emails, and that really helps a lot professionalism. So you get a Gmail account and you get a YouTube account because it's all Google nowadays. Um, so I would really recommend doing that for your group. Um, but anyway, so, so make your own YouTube pages. The moral of that story, I would really recommend that if you don't already. Um, so 
the proper ways to name and tag a video. Now there are several parts to, to a video when you when you upload a video to YouTube. Uh, I could probably show you that right now. So I'm just going to upload a video to YouTube and show you how we do this. Um, oh look. So we're going to screen share. Okay, so here we are. This is Tin Tabulations YouTube page. This is the page that uh, my handbell group uses. Um, so this is the, hand, the this is the YouTube page that my handbell group uses. We'll talk about the design and the layout of it in a little bit here. Um, it might be a little bit fuzzy on the recording, but that's about as high clarity as I could get it. I apologize. But anyways, when you log into your YouTube page, you'll notice there's an upload button at the top, and so. We're going to upload a video, and hopefully it won't destroy the streaming um, on this. But you'll be able to see Oh, that was the wrong button. <laughs> okay, that was the video image of the video I wanted to, and not the actual video. Okay, so here's a rehearsal file. Okay. So you'll notice when you go to upload a video, there are several sections to um, information that you need to include about your video. You have the title, you have a description, and then you have tags. Now these three parts are very, very important. Um, the title is obviously the first thing people will see when they click on your video. It's at the very top of the banner. Um, the cool thing about the... Um, there are several different strategies to, to titling things. Um, you can go with the viral video approach to titling things where you just put like, check out this awesome handbell choir. Um, or, um, but I really don't like that approach. That approach is kind of, kind of tacky. I mean, I will admit that the few videos on YouTube that have those kind of titles have lots and lots of views on them. Um, but what I noticed, because I follow a lot of um, other musicians from other genres on YouTube, and a lot of people, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll put the song name and then the group. So I would put Lenten, because that's what the name of this piece is, piece, P-I-U-C-E, and then Tintabulations. Um, I would put song name and group. Um, the reason for that is because it really makes it clear to the audience what it is they're watching. Um, a lot of times people will find these videos because they're searching for that particular piece on YouTube to practice with. I know when I when I when I get new handbell music, I always go to YouTube and type in the handbell piece name just to see what other groups are doing um, with that piece. And so, if you title it this way, it's very easy and quick to find, and other handbell ringers can come and find it and check it out. Um, so, I'd really encourage you to do song name and then group name, or something like that in your title. Um, now, the description of the piece, um, the description of the piece is also very very important. The first couple sentences of the description are going to be what um, people um, are going to be what people see when they go and search for your videos. If we just go and do a YouTube search for I don't know handbells, you'll notice that um, the first couple sentences that show up here are the first couple sentences of the description in your. Video. So you want to make the first couple sentences really what it's about. Um, be like, this is an exciting new piece by this handbell composer, or um, check out these cool techniques we use to ring this awesome piece, something like that in the first sentence of your description. So that's going to be really important because that way when people search for videos, they can look and see. Like this one says, high school handbell ensemble performs amazing rendition of Adele's rolling in. Okay, that kind of intrigues me. I want to see what this amazing handbell ensemble does. So I click on it. Um, as opposed to the one underneath it, which is handbell ring of fire, and all it says is handbells ring of fire. Those of us in the handbell world, we know what ring of fire is, and we know they're really awesome, so we're going to click on that. But people who don't know what handbells are would not know anything about that and probably would skip over that description. So your description, you want to be specific about what it is that's going on in your, in your video. And the first couple sentences you want to make very catchy because those are the ones that show up on the search. Now there are several other things you want to include in the description of your video. Um, I'll pull up one of our Tintab videos so you can see um, what that is. Okay, so here's a video of our group. 
Um, so in the description, I put you know a little bit about um, the piece. Um, especially, you want to include the title and the composer. Um, this is very important because we get into those whole copyright issues, and you know, technically, copyright law says that you're not allowed to post videos like this up on YouTube. Sometimes um, there are lots of copyright laws. I know Nancy Kirchner's going to be working on a blog post about that later that I'll share with everybody once she puts that together. Um, but a lot of musicians nowadays are doing this anyways, putting their music up on YouTube. Um, it's the biggest music searching site right now um, is, is YouTube. And so I would really encourage groups to go ahead and start putting music up there. But be sure that you credit the composer and the title. Um, this one we did as a, we did as a um, piece for Larry Sue. And so I actually did even put the link to go and purchase the music. Um, publishers really like that when you do that. So if, even if you include the link to go over and purchase the music, um, those really earn you brownie points with the publishers. Um, and if it's a good quality video, they, they probably won't have any um, issue with it. The other thing you always want to include in your description is links to your social media and other things. So if we notice down here at the bottom, I have links to facebook.com slash tintab and our website. Um, you want to include those social media links there. That way, if people stumble upon this video, they can click on those links and go out and find what it is that you do. Um, so that's really cool to do. So that's descriptions. Um, one other thing about descriptions is you'll notice that these are all hyperlinks here. You always want to include the HTTP colon slash slash and then the title of or and then the website address. YouTube, I know it's a little annoying to have to type HTTP colon slash slash every time you type a website address. But what that does is that tells YouTube that that is a website address and it turns it into a hyperlink. If I just put, you know, tintabulations.com, it would just it would just be a piece of text. But because I put HTTP colon slash slash in front of it, it turned it into a hyperlink. So now I can just click on it. So you always want to include that that HTTP thing. Um, in front of all of your web addresses in your descriptions. Um, also, I didn't include it here. I probably should go back and do this, but um, put a link to subscribe to your channel or back to your YouTube channel. Um, YouTube really recommends doing that, and I see that in a lot of people who use YouTube a lot. They will go ahead and do that. Okay, so that's the description. So now we have the title and the description. So your title, you're going to be putting your song title and your group name or something to that effect if you're posting just videos of performances. Um, and then in your description, be sure you credit the composer and the title of the piece and the publisher, and then put some links to your social media and things like that. So those are the title and description. There's a third part, and it doesn't show up on the YouTube page. It's hidden in the background, and it's called tags. Um, let's see if I can... Uh, video manager. Okay, so there's a third part to the videos, and they're called tags. So you see down here, here is a box that says tags. Now, Nancy Kirchner actually asked a really good question, um, which is, do you need to duplicate tags in your description? And the answer is yes. You want to duplicate all the information in both your description and your tags. The tags are the keywords that YouTube uses to search for, the, for your video. Um, the reason why tags are really important is because this is kind of what tells YouTube exactly what is in your video, so that way when people go and search for things, they can find you. So you want to be really creative with your tags, um, but you also want to duplicate all the information you've already put. So in your tags, you want to put your group name, um, you want to put any instrumentation you have in there. So for instance, if, you're, it's, if it's a piece for handbells with flute and guitar, then be sure you put handbells, flute, and guitar as all tags, so that way people can find it. Um, the composer's name is really important. Uh, I notice a lot of times when people search for things on YouTube, they'll put like Lenten Peace Larry Sue or you know Gravitas Michael Glasgow um, into the search bar. And so if, be sure you put the composer's name as a tag also so that way YouTube knows that that's who that is. Um, you also want to put misspellings of things. So for instance, our group name is Tintabulations. Um, nobody in their, nobody can spell tintabulations unless they know what it is they're looking for. And so a lot of times people will mistakenly put tintinabulations or our short name, tintab. And so you want to include all those different misspellings of your group name as a tag. That way, even if someone misspells your name, they can find you. Um, 
you also always want to include handbells. Um, I would I would recommend actually including handbells, hand space bell, and then um, some other variations thereof because nobody really because of spell checking reasons handbells typically doesn't come up properly. Um, so just keep that in mind. Some other information you might want to include include um, if it's a holiday piece, if it's a Christmas piece, if it's an Easter piece, you'll see that this one is marked Easter and Ash Wednesday because it's a Lenten piece. Um, so when people search for Easter music or Ash Wednesday music, it would come up. Um, maybe the city you come from. Um, that way, if somebody searches, like, you know, Handbells Boston, they'll be able to pull up videos of groups that perform Handbells in Boston. Um, so things like that. Genre might also be important. Genre is kind of iffy on Handbells because I'm never really quite sure what genre the Handbell is. Um, but... If you have a distinct genre for that piece, I would recommend putting that there. So yes, so those are the three components of what information you need to include with the handle video. You have the title, you have the description, and you have the tags. So be sure that those three are filled out. And a lot of and be sure that information is duplicated between all three so that way YouTube search knows how to find your videos. Um. Okay, so that's that. <laughs> I hope that helps a little bit as far as getting um, all of your descriptions and stuff put together. Um, now the next thing is there are a lot of other cool things besides just you know publicizing your videos out there of performances. Um, there are a lot of cool things you can do with YouTube, especially for rehearsal purposes. And I I actually been using YouTube a lot recently with our group um, for rehearsal purposes because you can post videos and hide them from the public up on YouTube and then um, send out the link to people. So if you go back over to YouTube, wherever it is, there it is. Um, so if we go back over to YouTube, you'll notice here, here's, um, there's Video Manager. Video Manager is really important. It's where all of your pieces are. There are a lot of videos in here that aren't shared publicly. Um, like, for instance, here is a video I took of our conductor conducting um, one day because she wanted some feedback on her, on her conducting style. And so I just set my phone camera up on the edge of the table, recorded her conducting, and then loaded, uploaded it to YouTube. Now it's hidden, so nobody can see it. Um, if we go to edit, you'll see that um, it's listed as unlisted here in the privacy settings. Um, so you can upload videos to YouTube for rehearsal purposes, mark it as unlisted, and then nobody can find it when they're searching around YouTube, but you can send that, the link to the video to people in your group for rehearsal purposes. So I do this a lot of times, like I'll throw up a video camera in the back of the room while we're doing our first few concerts of the season, so that we, after those concerts we can go back, watch the video, critique ourselves, and then improve for later concerts. Um, and so there are all kinds of cool things like that you can do with YouTube to really help out your group. Um, so it's really great for feedback and things like that. <coughs> okay. Back. Woohoo! Okay, so that is kind of some tips, tricks and tips I use for doing that. Um, we can probably talk a little bit more about how to navigate YouTube background if you'd like, but um, it's actually pretty intuitive um, under uh, using the background. Now, now, once you get your videos uploaded onto YouTube, YouTube has changed how it is that they present your videos to the public. Um, they've started rolling out a new YouTube channel design, and right now it's um, right now it's voluntarily voluntary. You don't have to switch over to the new design, but knowing YouTube and knowing knowing the way the internet works, give it a couple months, and it's going to be mandatory. They're, they're going to switch all of the YouTube channels over to the new design. Um, so the new design is a little tricky for handbell ensembles because we typically don't produce a whole lot of videos. I know with our group we'll post you know maybe three or four performances each concert season so maybe twice a year. We're posting like eight videos a year pretty much um, which really isn't a whole lot of content in YouTube standards. A lot of the big you know YouTube channels will post videos every day or every couple of days. Um, so the new YouTube layouts are designed to handle large quantities of videos and to sort, sort them around. And for handball ensembles, we really don't have large quantities of videos, and so it looks a little empty. But you can still kind of tweak it to, to work for you. So I've been playing around with our group. Let me show you what I've done with our group's channel, and then you guys can kind of get an idea as to um, 
what you can do with yours. Okay, so this is the Tintab YouTube channel um, with the new layout on it, not the old layout. Um, so you'll notice a few differences right away from the new layout to the old layout. First of all, up here at the top, they have this, this trailer feature. Um, YouTube actually shows people different things depending on if they're subscribed to your channel or if they're not subscribed to your channel. So if somebody shows up on the Tintabulations Handball Ensemble page and is not subscribed to us, this is what they'll see. They'll see, um, I just picked a random piece, one of the crowd favorites, Now the Green Blade Riseth. Everybody seems to like this piece. So this is our channel trailer. So if, if you show up on our page for the first time without being subscribed to us, this is what you see. Um, if you show up... Um, stop, stop. Okay. Um, if you show up and you are subscribed, it'll show you a list of the recent uploaded videos um, here. Now, the way the new YouTube layout is, is formatted, there's all of these series of rows of videos down here. Um, and so what these are is you can set up these rows to be um, all kinds of different things. You can set these up to be um, playlists. You can set these up to be videos that your group likes. You can set these up to be recent posts, recent activity, um, all kinds of things. I've been, I've been doing a lot with playlists on our group. I think that works really well for handbells. Um, if you see, I have a playlist of performances by Tin Tabulations. So these are all different concerts that we've done or different concert performances that we've done that are posted here. And then I did a playlist of behind the scenes. These are those random videos that I put up about like interviews with our director or just montages of videos from road trips and things like that. Um, and then I put a section down here for recent uploads. I haven't really figured out what better to do with the new YouTube layout for a handbell ensemble, but I think this kind of layout works. I think also what I'm going to do with this, we don't have a lot of Christmas music uploaded to the internet yet, but this winter I'll be sure to get a bunch of videos of that, and so I'll probably put another section here for Christmas music. Um, but anyways, so so for, the, for your handbell ensemble YouTube page, you're going to have to start thinking about grouping your videos into playlists. Um, and then posting those playlists here. So kind of just start thinking about that in your head as to how you can kind of break up videos and put them up here. Um, now, the top part of this page is a little tricky nowadays. Um, you have your, your, YouTube, your YouTube avatar, your avatar, I guess, like, like they usually call it. Um, but then you also have this channel art feature. This channel art feature is different than, say, your banner on Facebook or things like that. Um, this channel art is designed to go between a mobile phone and the computer and a TV, and so because of that, the proportions are just crazily out of whack. Um, so your group picture, I would not recommend using a group picture for your channel art because you'll see like like the four people in the middle's noses right about there. Um, I'll post, when I post this video up on, on the blog, I will put some links to some tricks about channel art. I'm still having trouble coming up with cool channel art for our group's page. Um, so as I kind of, kind of as I figure out some cool things for that, I'll post them up on the blog and give you guys some good ideas for that. But anyways, so that's how I would use the new YouTube layout for a handbell group. Group your performances, um, behind the scenes videos, group them up so that way people can find them easily. Um, maybe differentiate between spring and holiday seasons depending on what kind of concert rotations your group does. Um, so anyways. Those are my thoughts on that, on the new YouTube layout. Um, just a couple other things about YouTube really fast. Um, annotations in YouTube are kind of a big deal, and it kind of is what separates YouTube from just, you know, watching television. Um, annotations are those annoying little boxes that pop up along the screen um, that you can click on and go to different things. A lot of YouTube channels nowadays will put... Um, a button somewhere on the screen that tells you to subscribe to their channel. Um, a lot of times they'll put links to other videos that are related to your videos on the screen. And so I, YouTube seems to nowadays really be rewarding channels that can keep people, keep their viewers on YouTube for long periods of time. And so the more that you can bounce people between your own YouTube videos, the higher your videos will rank in search. Um, 
Now, in handles, that's not really that important because there aren't that many groups right now putting their videos up on YouTube, and so if you put a good video up on YouTube, handbell people will find it because there aren't that many out there. Um, but assuming that we can start to get more and more groups putting handbell videos up on, up on YouTube, we're going to need to start ranking better in searches. And so if you can put, like, a button, you know, right up here in the corner that says, you know, check out our latest video or things like that, um, YouTube actually has just added a really cool feature um, that adds the cool little watermarks to the bottom of your screen. Um, I'll show you that. I actually just did that over on um, the Handbell Brothers channel. Um, let me pull up one of our videos. Okay, so <laughs> okay, so here's the Handbell Brothers channel, and so I don't know if you remember our our video where we did an open letter to the Handbell community, but anyway, so here's our video, and if you notice down here in the corner, um, there's this in, our our logo showed up in the corner, and when I scroll over it, it talks about our channel. Um, this is called an edit. This is um, one of the new features that YouTube has just added, and I really, really like it because what this does is this gives people uh, just another place to click to go into your channel and to find more videos, um, which keeps people looking at your videos and keeps people engaged with what it is that you're doing on YouTube. So the way that you set that up is if you go into um, your video manager, um, on the side you'll see a button for channel settings and then you click on in video programming and then it will give you the chance to either feature one of your videos or feature um, channel art or something like that on the video and so I'd really encourage your group to set that up it's just another way to look more professional another way to keep keep people um, clicking on your videos um, the only trick with this is that it likes images in squares so the Handball Brothers logo works really really well well because it's kind of squarish and so it likes that square. Um, the Tin Tabulations logo is very long and rectangular and so it doesn't look right when I put it on top of the channel like that and so I'm working on trying to figure out a better way to, to format our logo. So just kind of keep that in mind. You want a square logo down there, something that's small and unobtrusive but yet interesting and kind of brands it as your channel. So that's just one of the cool new things that YouTube has added in that really seems to work well. Um, for that. One other cool thing, or one other trick I just learned, um, is, is talking about sharing your videos on Facebook. A lot of times, um, a lot of times I always encourage people to upload their videos to YouTube and then share those links over onto Facebook instead of uploading it to YouTube and uploading it to Facebook. Um, and there's actually been some very interesting studies done recently by some of the larger YouTube um, and Facebook channels about um, what works best as far as sharing YouTube videos across. And what they found actually really surprised me. I was just reading about this yesterday, and it's really cool. And I'm going to have to start doing this on our blog. Um, but, you, but Facebook, in the new ranking system that Facebook uses, um, it tends to not rank outside links as well as it does Facebook links. Um, so when you're sending people away from Facebook to go check out like a YouTube video, Facebook doesn't seem to rank those quite as well as they do Facebook videos. There's not quite as much of a difference. Um, there's not enough of a difference to really make it worth your time to upload your video to Facebook and upload your video to YouTube. But what they recommended, and what I'm going to start trying on our channel, um, is to upload pictures to your Facebook page. So if I want to share my video onto Facebook, um, what I would do is I would upload a picture onto Facebook, and then in the description of the picture, in the first sentence, I would just put the link over to the YouTube page. Um, that link will show up every time that the picture gets shared on Facebook because if you remember on Facebook they always have the link in the description right above um, the pictures that are shared on Facebook and you get a much larger picture than you would if you shared it over onto Facebook um, and the numbers they were showing were incredible like 200 percent increase in the number of people who like liked and commented and shared videos posted as a picture with a link as opposed to just posting the video so, just something interesting to think about for, for Facebook. I'm, I'm going to start trying that on our blog and see if, if that helps at all. Um, so, there's all kinds of interesting things you can play around with. 
um, just be sure, like, when you upload videos to YouTube, you also post them on your Twitter or your Facebook or whatever it is that you have, um, your website, definitely. If you have an email list, I'd, you know, send it out to your email list along with, you know, your upcoming concerts. Um, just share it as much as possible. Um, the more we can get these cool videos up online and the more we can get interesting content around the internet as far as handbells go, the more people are going to start getting interested in handbells. And if we can get more people interested in handbells, then we can do more of this fun stuff. And it's not just a part-time thing. Um, so those are kind of my thoughts on YouTube at the moment. Let me see if anybody has posted anything. Um, but yeah, so those are my thoughts, and I just wanted to kind of get that out there. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. And if you have any further questions, just, you know, just post them over on our Facebook page. Um, Bryce and I always check in and answer and comment back. We love seeing all of you guys' um, responses. So um, thank you guys for watching.